What up, though, y'all? It's Chris. Appreciate you connecting with me this morning while I'm doing my 10,000 steps. I'm out here early, and yes, you are not crazy. Your eyes are not deceiving you. Your boy's out here wearing a tank today, even though just the other day I was out here cold as hell. Talking about, forget this hoodie, I need to have on a full on winter coat. That's Michigan weather for you right now, though. Like, I don't know about anywhere else, but that's that's what life is like for us. Trust and believe that the other day when I was cold as hell out here talking to y'all, I did not think that just a couple days later I'd be out here wearing a tank. But here we go. <laughs> it's supposed to be 77 today. Uh, Got people honking. I couldn't even tell what they was honking about. It seemed like they was in separate lanes or whatever. I don't know. Maybe one was drifting into the other lane. Who the hell knows? Shout outs to you guys, my subscribers, new and old. I appreciate the love you guys have been sending my way. The support is really amazing. And uh, it's, it's very, it's very humbling. You know, that's, that's why I continue to get out here and do this. Like I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna do my walk anyway. Cause you know, that's how your boy continue to, you know, look like this and, and improve. So I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna do my walk anyway. But it's the, it's the talking to you guys. Um, the love you show me, I try to show that back by making sure I connect with you guys daily. Um, and I know there's there was like a gap before where I was doing some shorts. That was mostly like, uh, well, it was like two things. I had like injured my like quad or something like that. I pulled it. I was kind of giving it a few days to heal up. That and um, I was trying to test shorts to see how, how that worked out for me. Um, I did get some subscribers behind it, but um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do more shorts. We'll we'll see. Maybe I'll do a combination. I'll do long form videos and shorts, and uh, you know, just that variety, if you will. But uh, yeah, let's get into the topic, man. I saw Angel Reese has a podcast because who don't have a podcast now? Even I'm thinking about doing a damn podcast. I've had a couple of you guys recommend that I do one. I've had a couple of you guys recommend that I uh, do one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentorships. I guess, you know, there's some self-improvement guys out there that uh, they, they you know, do that. They talk to you guys, answer questions, kind of give you wisdom. I, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm full of that, man. So uh, perhaps that is something I'll, I'll consider and lean into. But uh, Angel Reese, she's got a podcast because who the hell doesn't? And, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wait and let them go. There's a car pulling out of this parking lot. So I'm just trying to give them some space. But Shaq was a guest on there. And I'm not surprised Shaq was a guest on there for a few reasons. Shaq went to LSU with her. He's been showing her support. Well, he didn't go to LSU with her. He went to LSU also. She went many years late, obviously. But... Um, she's signed to his Reebok brand because I think Shaq is either part owner or outright owner or something like that. Shaq managed to uh, get a hold of Reebok because, you know, back in the day, Shaq had um, a signature line of shoes uh, with them. And he ended up leaving them uh, to go, like, do his own thing, a cheaper shoe, because he apparently a, a mom had yelled at him at a game about how expensive his shoes were and that like really hit home with him so he quit out of the Reebok contract and did his own shoe that was a budget shoe and it did do very well for him I think Hakeem Olajuwon had a budget shoe also by Spalding it was like $34.99 or something but uh, Shaq's on her podcast you know Shaq's uh, called himself a, a mentor of hers now I don't know if she's ever called Shaq a mentor but I know Shaq is kind of referred to himself as being a mentor or elder or something of the like for her well you see he's sitting there on the on the pod and they're talking about ways to make the WNBA more interesting and as always whenever the men recommend a way to make the WNBA a more entertaining product they are so resistant to it they hate the idea of lowering the rim, even though they're really not that great at shooting on the rim at the current height. The complaint that I've seen uh, be made the most uh, when it comes to 
the entertainment factor is there's no dunking. It's like, dang, try lowering the rim a little bit. Nine and a half, maybe nine feet, try lowering the rim. They are so opposed to this. Um, the, the, the best answer that I've seen given, and I think it was uh, Candace Parker who gave this, was she's been shooting on a 10-foot rim her whole life and a nine-foot rim that would throw her shot off. I do hear that. I do understand that. Um, but what I've seen men say, and these are, you know, pro male ball players, is that you're a professional, you'll adapt. Start practicing on the lower one. I understand that you've been shooting on the higher one all your life. Start shooting on the lower one. You're a professional, you'll adapt. And I mean, there is something to be said about that because, you know, think about people like Lonzo who have like completely changed their, their shooting form. The rim wasn't lower, it was the same, but he had to go through a process of missing a bunch of shots before he finally came into rhythm with his new shot. Now his new shot, not only does it look much better, it's faster and uh, he makes it a lot more often. So, you know, when you, when you are willing to change something, when you're willing to put in the work to make something better, that will happen. But that's not what made Shaq being on there controversial. That came in the form of Shaq was talking about the women dunking, that men would be able to, uh, that, that men would be more interested in it if, if women dunked. And, uh, you know, she's like, she doesn't like this idea. She doesn't agree, this and that. And, you know, Angel Reese, now keep in mind, I really like her a lot. But this is the same person who was crying about she's been sexualized. Even though leading up to that interview where she was crying telling us that she's been sexualized, she was sexualizing herself. That girl know how she built. She know how she built. And she trades on it every day. All them thirst trap pictures and stuff she be posting, she she knows how she looks. She's proud of how she looks. So I don't even know where that came from, that whole I've been sexualized thing. That just sounded really wild. Like, why are you acting like you don't be exploiting yourself every day, all day? And since since doing that, uh, that, that presser, she still continued to do it even more. She shared some pictures the other day where she was wearing something that looked like bedwear or uh, lingerie wear, like something that only somebody you getting down with should see you in. So I just don't get that. But Shaq referenced some of the type of shorts that she be wearing. And I didn't believe that Shaq was in any way, shape or form trying to be like a predator like he just was like, you know, those those booty shorts you got that you be wearing. If you were to be dunking wearing those, men would absolutely like that. And Shaq's not wrong. You know what men like. You know that that aspect men really like because you trade on it. You're not you're not sharing photos of you in lingerie and those short blue jean shorts and stuff that are, you know, crawling up your cheek. You aren't sharing those for women. You're sharing those for men. You like the attention from men. So to sit here and act like you don't get it, you don't understand when you have a man straight up telling you this, it's like they do these sorts of things and no one's supposed to notice. No one is supposed to say anything about it. It's, it, it's just so ridiculous. So Shaq says this. She looks, she looks a bit uncomfortable. I ain't gonna hold you up, she does. She she looks a bit uncomfortable in Shaq saying this stuff, but I don't think because she was, you know, feeling like Shaq was like saying anything directed at her, uh, per se, to be weird and um, sexual. I think it was because, I think it was because she was getting called out and she is not used to that. So for the first time, she had somebody actually calling her out like, hey, look, you be wearing this and that, and you know you know the audience that you're wearing this and that for. So that same audience, if you were to wear this and that and dunking, you don't think they would like it? 
Shaq was not being in any way, shape, or form a creeper. But, of course, sisters always looking for any opportunity to frame a brother as being some sort of ain't shit, you know, entity. And now here was an opportunity for them to use Shaq in their never ending quest to try to villainize every black man. You know, I don't understand this whole villainized black man thing because if we just keep in a spade a spade, sisters have no other real options. You know, if for all the disdain you seemingly have for, for black men, if we go away, who do you have? There is no other group of men that are lining up to be a suitor for sisters. There is, it's us or nobody. There's not no long line of white men, no long line of Hispanic men. Now, there are outliers. You'll see a sister with someone from another group here and there. But we all know that is extremely uncommon, extremely uncommon. You may see a black guy or a Hispanic guy with a white woman. That's pretty common. But the other way, that is extremely uncommon. So by large, sisters really don't have other options outside of black men. So we're not gonna speak to the unicorn examples. Oh, I know this woman who does, I know that. Yeah, that's fine, but those are very special outlier situations. We speak to the majority. And with the majority, sisters just don't have no options like that. So it's us or nobody. So for all this disdain that they seem to have for us, if we go away, what do you have? Like really nothing. I mean, you know, maybe that's what y'all want. I don't know. The strong and independent thing, it has not been working out for you. It's largely left you lonely with cats and box box wine subscriptions. But maybe, maybe that's what y'all really want. I don't know. So that's, that's what it came down to, man. It came down to Shaq not even being a creeper. Just simply making, you know, confronting her with something that she does. And she was uncomfortable because no one, I don't think Angel Reese really gets held accountable for anything. And I'm, this is coming from somebody that actually likes her. Angel Reese has a bunch of yes people around her. She's never really held accountable for anything. And now here was somebody older than her that doesn't need her for anything. And he was able to call her out on something, which is something that other people in her life are not able to do. So he called her out on this. She's uncomfortable because she's not used to being held accountable for her for her actions, the things that she does. And uh, the raging feminists want to try to spin it as him being inappropriate. I'm going to ask this question, and then I'm going to wrap this video up. Who can say anything to black women? Who can? White men can't. Hispanic men can't. Black women don't say anything to each other because black women do not hold each other accountable. And black men cannot even hold black women accountable. So I ask that question, who can ever say anything to black women without it being spun into something negative? If you got an answer, leave it in the damn comments. I'll be waiting. Appreciate y'all as always. Peace.